Good morning, everyone. This is day three. So far, I think people have enjoyed seeing me fail, or at least fail a few times before managing to make it work in the end. Uh, this is my take on the advent of code 2019 done in Erlang through ad hoc unedited video, uh, which is a great opportunity for you to get annoyed when you spot a mistake that I haven't spot, and then I, uh, I spend a lot of time just trying to fix it. Uh, or figuring out what is wrong while you knew the entire way through. So this is day three. Uh, yesterday had us do some uh, evaluator for custom upcodes. Let's see what today has in store. Crossed wires, the gravity assist was successful and you're well on your way to Venus refueling station. During the rush back on Earth, uh, the fuel management system wasn't completely installed, so that's next on the priority list. All right. Opening front panel reveals a jumble of wires. Specifically, two wires are connected to a central port and extend outward on a grid. You trace the path each wire takes as it leaves a central port, one wire per line of text, your puzzle input. Okay. The wires twist and turn, but the two wires occasionally cross path. To fix the circuit, you need to find intersection point closest to the central port. So I'm guessing there's going to be multiple intersection points, but only one close to the central port. Because the wires are on a grid, use the Manhattan distance for this measurement. So let's see what it is. I think I recall. Oh, good. Yes, the mathematical definition surely works well. Um, let's see. Let's no, not the formal definition. Let's see. Okay, taxi cab geometry. Radius theta. No, I don't want these. Let's see. If, oh, distance in chess. Between squares in a chess board is a taxi cap distance. Kings and queens, chippy chip distance. Okay. Um, to reach from one square to another, only kings require the number of move equal to their respective distance. Rooks, queen, bishop, only one or two moves. Uh, I have a feeling that having a full browser could be interesting for that one. Let's see. Is that all we have on it? Okay. Let's. That would be interesting if I'm able to open files that way. Open it up. Oh, I got it opened on a browser on the side, which for you probably say, there you go, snapping windows just broke everything. Okay, yeah, it's only the left, right, left, right, up, down directions and distances to get where we want. So that's not too bad. Uh, while the wires do technically cross right at the central port where the bow start, this point does not count, nor does a wire count as crossing with itself. Okay. For example, if the first wire's path is, let's get the image, right, yep, right 8, so it starts here, right 8, up 5, left 5, and down 3, then starting from the central port O, it goes right up, uh, left, right, left, three. Then if the second wire path is up seven, okay, so they're just overlaying them there. It goes up seven, right six, down three, left four. These wires cross at two locations marked X, but the lower left one is closer to the central port. Its distance is three plus three, so six. So yeah, three, three. All right, here are a few more examples. I think I get that one, but usually I don't. Okay, so that's the entire coordinate system. All right, distance is 159. For these, those are two. Are they two wires? Each on the line, I guess so. Uh, and they're just giving us the result on these. What is the Manhattan distance to the closest intersection? So let's see the puzzle input. I'm going to save it, but we're probably still going to start from the uh, shorter one that we have otherwise. So puzzle input for that one. Yeah, two wires, one per line. I'm going to save that to priv day 03. All right. I'm going to start by just copy pasting these two lines and getting started right away. Um, is this a fun day? Maybe. Manhattan distance is not the worst I could have imagined. All right, uh, let's start again with 
An example function. Ooh, yeah, it's early in the morning. I'm gonna do this before I get to work. But I work from home, so I get a bit more time than most people would have. Ex I'm just squandering all my time in bad typos. All right. So my input is likely to look like this, and I'm just going to replicate the thing that way. For those not aware, Erlang automatically takes two literal strings and merges them together. So that's going to be uh, the text input. Let's align the thing. So I'm going to do that easy thing, which is going to be uh, wire A and wire B. And I'm going to use A and B only because if I then need to have variables like A1, B, B2 or something, it's easier than if they're just called by a number because at that point uh, I can't start a variable name by a number. So like scenes because I'm just spliffing this Thing on a light break, uh, and those are still text. Let's be a bit clearer. So, wire A is going to be uh, and. We're splitting on a comma. This is roughly the same parsing as we would have had to do in the other days. Okay, now we've got these paths. Uh, wait a second. So I'm supposed to have a given point of origin, but I'm not quite sure what it is. Just reading this. Oh, wait, I'm starting at right 75. Okay, I don't know what it is. Okay, that's an interesting one. So this is going to be my... There is a point of... Uh, a starting point, the origin, which is unknown. Then I go right 75, and that gives me O plus 75. Actually, I can just call the point of origin 0, 0. I'm still going to be able to use the same kind of grid I used yesterday with a map just giving me all the little values that I have. Um, I guess the question here is, so that one is obviously, well, the second point is going to be, if I'm using these axes, is going to be that way. The third one is going to be um, minus 30 because I'm going down. So. The question for my representation, because I want to find the point at which they cross, is uh, whether the thing I do is just these points like that for both wires, and um, then I would have for the second wire something like this, then it would be uh, up 72. Oh, which makes me think this is entirely not the right way to go about this. Uh, let's just for the time being, keep the simple. I'm going to parse them differently, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's solve the problem before we actually implement a solution. And so write 76 would then be 76, 72. And so the thing I can do with these, I guess, is um, Either I put them in a map and then I just go where do these cross based on all the points I'm going towards. Uh, the other thing I can do instead is that for each point like this could represent 62 insertions in the map and this would represent 66 of them. And the thing I have to do is start with uh, what is either of the paths fill the entire thing and then just see when they cross uh, by adding all the values. The other thing that this lets me do as well is to do uh, a point by point increase in the map. No, I need to map the entire thing because they want the closest one. So I still need to find all of them. Okay, so 
if I do them with all of these values, I there is surely a very simple algorithm to know if you're crossing a path or a point with something else, which would be, uh, I'm going to draw a little bit here. Oh, actually, it might be easier if I just go and copy paste one of these maps and play with it. Oops, here we go. You know what? I'm going to do it in the empty space here. Yeah, that's going to be simpler. And that's usually the hardest part is figuring out my goddamn algorithm. So in this case, this is going to be my origin point, which is uh, means that I'm going to have my axis as zero minus one. One. Seven, eight, and let's cut to the chase here. So this is going to be eight. And so the kind of algorithm I'm going to need there is that my point X, the first one that crosses, that is the closest, is going to be at two and three. And this is the point where they cross. But the two wires that touch that one are going to be uh, 1, 3 for the first one. I'm going to have two coordinates. Plus here we have 3 and 5. And 5. And this is coupled with on the other axis I have... Two and two plus two and five. So this, both of them give, give me what I guess is a straight line, but I'm probably able to calculate on the fly that since this is a straight line, like there is only one, wait a minute, I calculated around this is, One three, one three, yeah. This is five three. For each of these points, I'm able to do it live. Probably uh, take a segment and calculate all the points. In yeah, I need to calculate all the points in between because this is not a straight line. I don't want to be grabbing a diagonal that I have here that I don't have otherwise. So I'm going to do it with the little point by point trick and fill in all the values for each one of these I have. It's going to make the comparison a bit easier. Um, the interesting thing that I can do though is not necessarily use a map. All I have to use here is a path. The thing I want to do is find the points that are in common with both. So that means that the thing I want to use is actually a set. And I'm going to fill a set with each one of the maps with all of the points that are in there. Uh, I could do it simply with a list that is sorted and then compare them uh, as a map. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, each of the strings there I'm going to be broken up that way. Um, and I'm going to parse a position. It's going to be a bit... Uh, I need to parse the position that I have. Let's get started. I have a plan on the things I want to do. Actually, those are going to be just a wire, wire, yeah, that makes sense. Then I'm going to turn them in points, two points out of their parts. So we'll see the kind of output we get after that. But parsing a position is going to be based on each value. So I'm going to have a uh, plus uh, some string, and that is going to, let's break it down, there are always two digits, but I don't know if it's going to be that in my input map, yeah, let's do it that way. Um, so what this, oh god, I can't do it this way, just because. 
Oh, actually, yeah. Let's do it this way. This is just parsing. This is not actually reading and understanding all of these. Uh, then I'm going to have the, I'm just going to call it down. Let's make it a representation I can use after the fact. It's not ever going to be the most golfy code that is super easy to uh, fit on a business card but it is the one that I find easiest to work with down the line. So let's see what we get here. I mean, compile the shell. Oh yeah, I copy pasted stuff, oops. This is day three. Day three, example. Oh. It's day zero 03. I made the same mistake yesterday, which is great because I can remember my mistake, but I do not learn from them. All right. So that gives me what I can do here, which I'm going to um, expand. I'm just going to call it expand because I'm not a very imaginative person there. And the expansion of a wire, I'm going to start them with. Uh, just a list of value. I know of values. I know they're in order. I'm going to make it a recursive function uh, where I am starting at point zero zero. Quite simply. So this function will be done when I'm at the end here, and since it's going to be tail recursive, I'm going to reverse the accumulator. All right, I could put them all in a set as I go. Uh, the problem with that is that all the points are really kind of unique in there. And the other one is that I always want to have access to the last point to be able to uh, do a proper expansion of all of them. Uh, so I'm going to be using an instru uh, direction and uh, distance and then the rest of the list. And then I am going to have, uh, which is an X and Y coordinate in an accumulator. So I'm going to take my direction and my distance and my point. And the thing I want to do is expand on these. So expand points for all of these. And I'm going to give you the direction, the distance, uh, let's just grab the point directly. And I'm going to have that generate me a list that I'm going to stick in the accumulator. And that means I'm going to call this. Um, what this forces me to do, though, is add the last point first. So I'm going to start with an empty list. I'm going to give it its accumulator to flip it down at a later point. Actually, those can just share the same accumulator. This is going to be a kind of mutually recursive function. Not really, but yeah. So I'm going to have a direction. I'm going to keep it the direction. If I'm at zero, I'm done. Uh, oh, the direction, the distance. Uh, that was my previous point. If I do that, I am done. And I have the accumulator. I no longer need the direction, actually. And I return that. This is again my base case. So when I'm done adding all the points to my accumulator, I return the accumulator. Uh, okay. If I'm going up and I have a direction to go and I have an X and Y value in an accumulator, the thing I want to do is keep expanding points of Oh, I'm going to make it slightly higher level. And 
I'm going to do it. Let's do it again, just. I'm going to apply it to the next point and then. And this is my recursive function and uh, applying the direction is going to be if I'm up x, y, I'm, I'm going to do x, y plus 1. Yep. And I'm going to just reapply the same kind of logic there. If I'm going down, then it's going to be minus 1 left is going to be x minus 1 and right is going to be x plus 1. So let's do a double check. Those are the direction. Yeah, up, left, down, right. So I've created that list. I'm supposed to apply all of these. And this is exploding because why is it complaining? Expand to is undefined. What did I mess up? Oh. Missing parenthesis. All right, here we go. Day three example. I've got a crap load of points. Oh yeah, I started with sixty of them or something. Uh, let's get the full output. And all right, that kind of seems to make sense. So we've got our two wires that have been expanded. Uh, I'm going to just expand the top position here. So the thing I wanted to do then was uh, get them both in a set. Um, this is going to be quite a small set, so I could be using the... Um, uh, it's not going to be the fastest one. Actually, let me just use sets. Who gives a shit? All right. Set B is my. Uh, my B. I'm guessing they need to be sorted as well. Uh, y or B. And then uh, let me see my documentation. I probably have this somewhere in the page. Sets, 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 sets. Uh, oh yeah, intersection, that is the term I want. That's going to give me all the common elements between the sets I have. Uh, and I can just give them a list. So let's do this. see what we get with that. I have the entire set data structure, but I can already see the points there. So there's the origin point is shared. That one is shared. All right. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going just going to flat out ignore that one. Um, Turn it to a list. All right, and then the distance is going to be easy to calculate for each of these. Because at that point, it's only going to be the absolute value in some of each of them. Because the distance from 0 to 0 is going to be 158 plus 12. 155 plus 11, blah, blah, blah. That's going to be that. So, uh, that's, uh, yeah. I'm going to sort the result and I am going to call absolute value of y. Oh. Uh, what are they asking as a result though? Because I need to have, they want the distance of it and they want the distance for the closest intersection. So I'm going to be using the absolute value of both where x and y is this. 
And once they are sorted, the thing I actually want is the first of the last one. So let's, oops, that's the origin point. I want the result of this and I ignore the rest. This is easy pattern matching. I should move it in a way that's better indented here. All right, now that should be a bit more readable. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And the thing I'm returning is X, and that should be my example for this one. And my distance is 159, which was 159 on this one. So far, so good. Let me try this one now for a distance of 135. Um, so I'm going to comment out this one. Um, let's put this, and that's supposed to be 135, and we'll see what we get. 135, so it seems like we've got a solution that should work. Let's copy-paste all of that stuff. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, right, that should be... Uh, what's my function to get the text input? It's input. Uh, module name, input, and I just called that one day zero three, I believe. Those are expanded. Uh, I'm going to, that's going to be fine. That's going to be fine. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to just extract this into another function that I'm going to call uh, uh, yeah some absolute points of a list and I'm going to return just the entire freaking thing on that one and I'm going to want to have the one that is not zero of the sum of the absolute point the sums let's be plural because otherwise that would be a single number and I don't want that oops absolute points of a list and that list is going to be this thing here and I can now join this thing into one function. And I return x. I'm missing a parenthesis in here. OK. And I can get rid of the example code here. It's no longer really required anymore. Why oh, is it complaining? Oh, yeah. There we go. Example is no longer here. That should give me the result I want. So let's compile advent run three. This is not very fast as a result. This is not a good sign. Let's see if it's correct before we actually optimize it though. Submit and that worked. Okay, before continuing, before optimizing though, I'll see if part two is, oh yeah, very timing sensitive. We'll need to count each wire takes to reach each intersection. Choose the intersection where the sum of both wires is the lowest. The intersection where the sum of both wires steps is the lowest. Oops. Okay, yeah. If our visits, oh, okay, so they are going to want the path length to be the intersection point, which is going to be a bit annoying. Visit the position of the grid multiple times. Use the steps value from the first time it visits that position when calculating the number of intersection. The number of steps a wire takes is the total number of grid squares the wires in turn to get to that location. Including the intersection being considered. 
Okay, so I think we can just add the stuff uh, from the other one. Identify the point and thing. Yeah, so they want 20 steps to find the right point, which is kind of nice because the structure we have is going to make it easy to go with that. I've taken a very um, unoptimal way of storing this rather than doing the calculations, but I'm going to be able to just count the points in each list until I see what I want. Um, the intersection closes the central point is reached, blah, blah, blah. But the top right intersection is better. First wire on the thing. Okay. Oh. The second wire. So, frankly, the easy way to do that one is the one I'm going to start with because. Um, in every other day, the kind of thing that I do is I start with a solution I think is going to be more optimal, and then I end up fighting a whole lot with it. So I'm going to make something that is straightforward and then optimize, uh, which is uh, the old Joe Armstrong rule of first, make it work, second, make it beautiful, and then if you need to, make it fast. So day three, I still have these, I still have all of these sorts. I have all of my intersections. The thing I'm going to drop for that one is only the first one. So I'm going to do... Uh, just call it uh, crosses. And that's going to be the rest of this set. Now the thing I'm going to do is... This is essentially the input for my next one the point where they cross. And now I need to calculate the shortest distance to each one of them for each one of my wires and less. And, and, and since I have the expanded values in the right order for each one of them, although I believe they, oh yeah, they were reversed, which I did not need to do, but now it is useful because I can cross them in order. That was not required for the first step, but I benefit from this now. So, those are going to be um, lengths A, let's just call it length. Yeah, that sounds like a length. Anyway, we know the distance there is. It's going to be 4 each of the points. I'm going to go and The cross distances for wire A and crosses. Um, I'm just doing some substitutions. So here, what I'm going to have then is a list of all the distances there. A list of all the distances with B and the thing I will be able to do at the end with this is uh, they should have the same length the same result I should be able to essentially just zip them and find the shortest one so I'm going to sort the result by the, what is the exact result they wanted the number of steps that are added for both so for each of these, I'm going to be able to take the A plus B value of what is going to be the A count, the B count for steps. Uh, I'm going to not store the points for now. I think I won't need them for lists. Zip crosses A and crosses B. So I'm going to have two lists with essentially the same number of points because I'm going to have one point per crossing. Uh, they will have exactly the same length and the same order because I'm calling the same cross distance function. So I'm going to be able to take these two values in terms of step, sort them and give me the result. And then I'm just going to take the first one of that. Actually, I should be, you don't need to sort. Can just use the smallest one in the list that's going to be a bit more effective than having to sort the entire thing okay so now what i need to do is um 
the sums of the absolute points is done, the cross distance, plural. So why are all the crosses, the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have the cross distance of the wire with a given point for each point in the crosses. And this is a function. I should probably flip these. Nope, actually not at all. So I don't expect this function, this function's base case is not when the list is empty. It's going to be when uh, a, the first point I have here matches with the point I have here. And uh, let's store an accumulator. And this is when I return the count of how many steps it has taken me to make it there. Uh, zero steps when I'm at the same one. That's fine. Cross distance of another one, then the point doesn't fit. With the point. And I have my accumulator and that just means he cross distance of t point act plus one. And that's it. That's the distance calculation. Um, I'm going to see if it crashes or not, but the thing I'll need to... That is not a fast problem. Yep. So that didn't work. All right. We're going to start it with... Uh, what's my example input? Let's go with this one. We're going to bring examples back and do it that way. And I'm expecting 610 on that one. Wait a second, I'm going to see that this is 610. Let me comment that one out and do some debugging in terms of what I think should be happening in here. I'm going to have a line break at the end. All right, so the crosses there, that's still the same thing, right? Part one should still work fine uh, because I only failed in part two. Um, let's just make sure that that one was still fine. Yeah, that one still worked. I believe that was the good result. I was expecting the other one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So at least I haven't broken anything there in terms of the old one. Um, what do I get? Clearly the cross distance is the part that explodes. Um, I'm going to save it and just try it again. Surely, we are going to be able to trace that little one. Uh, day zero 03, uh, the function I want is cross distances. I'm going to look at the plural one first. Uh, just give them 10 calls and scope local on these. Wrong day. This is day three. And now we call it. Mm. Oh, why isn't getting me across distances? Plural is the one I want to match for this one. Oh, the singular one is the one that broke. All right. Why am I not getting any input in there? Was that scope local? I think it's supposed to be scope. Yeah, it matched the function. It's just not seeing it being called. Yeah, still being matched. 
why am I not getting any results for this one? Oh, that's because I crashed, probably. There we go. Yeah. So I do get the results for some of them. 9-0, blah, 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 blah. And I'm trying to match on 150. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, that's a problem, right? I'm matching on a distance, not on the points. So I need to rework that one. I don't need to sum the absolute values of the points. I just need to do the sets to list for all the intersections in there. Um, and I am going to remove the origin point from these because I'm not interested in getting its values for the crosses. Now let's see what we get. <laughs> uh, where's my compile? Compile. All right. Tracing. I need to catch them. 610. I got the right result. I haven't even needed to. Uh, yeah, the module was not loaded, but now I know it should be working. And 610 is the result I expected. Good grief. It works. This is where having a type language would have caught the error for me. Uh, I could be running dialyzer on that one. Actually, that's probably a terrible idea right now, but let's see what that gives us. I should make it work first. Yeah, the PLT was not built. Oh, that was fast. No type error. If I revert it, though, let's revert my cool little change here and see what dialyzer tells me. Yeah, it's not necessarily finding much. Come on, you can do it. I guess it's not good enough to know what the type of a point is on that one. I'm going to. I'm curious about what it is, but if I. Uh, to be a list of. Uh, just call it a list of points that is not empty and if I had taken the time to tight spec them maybe it should have worked and uh, integer and what I want is an integer let's see what I get there yeah I'm thinking that this one was just not giving me the right results all right uh, Let's. Do I still have that little? Oops. Yeah, I'm going to be able to roll back. Yeah, I didn't find. Okay, now let's try with the versions that I think I have saved. Yep. And while it's checking that, I'm just going to revert to what I had a few seconds ago in the fork that did what I wanted it to do. This is the undo three, undo tree that I have in Vim that lets me roll back in time even though I may change it. It didn't find a mistake. Okay, that's disappointing. All right, uh, I don't need this. Compile, and that's R3. Brace this one for D3, and that's advance, not rebar three. It's a bit slow, but it gives me, uh, the first one is the time. Okay, it's faster this time around. It's a bit more than one second, but we're going to optimize that if it works well. That worked. First time around this time. All right. So we are 43 minutes into this video right now. Let's take maybe five minutes and see if we can make this a bit faster. So sets from list uh, actually does not need me to sort any of the input in there. I don't think it does. For the intersection, this is going to be fine. The cross distance is going to be all right that way. But let's just see how much time this gains us. The first one is still going to be slow. Okay, so that's about a bit less than 10% of it. It's not a great uh, way to benchmark. Frankly, uh, I usually use another library that is called um, Eministat that has been written by Jesper Lewis Anderson. That gives you proper benchmarking from these. Um, the thing that we don't know with that result yet is um, where is the time going? So I'm going to do the... Ooh, I'm still in paste mode, which means I... Okay. 
Uh, uh, what is monotonic time? And I want it in millisecond. And I'm just going to do, you know, the very simple thing, which is going to calculate a bunch of points and see which ones are taking the longest. Uh, the last step is not going to be quite long. I don't want to change my output there. So I'm just going to add it with that one. And my output is going to be T1 minus T0, T2 minus T1, T3 minus T2, and T4 minus T3. And at least this gives me a place of where to focus in optimizing that result. So if I run them, the biggest amount of time is taken on the second step. That's the one that's worth optimizing. And the second step is just turning everything into sets. Um, so we can try with different sets and see what we get. And that might be interesting. Oops, yeah, that's not because here. Orange sets is usually much lower, but if our input is small enough, it might actually lower the overhead on that one. Where am I using it otherwise? Oh, there's another call here. Yeah, actually that one, because we're using a smaller data structure, it is much more effective. Am I still getting the same result? Yes. So just by doing this, I have shaved off most of my times. It's not fast. Uh, uh, yeah, it's across. Uh, it's it was a 1200. It's 256. So that, that that's a big saving on time. I'm going to almost call it a day just with that. I can optimize this one here as well by just selecting all of that and substituting sets with ORD sets. Here we go. Why is this one complaining? Oh yeah, I dropped the benchmarking code. Uh, the other biggest amount of time was still in the set stuff, but the big difference was the conversion to and from a list and the intersection was now much, much, much faster. And I could have written by hand, but it's not required at all. And that was a very rapid and easy optimization, right? It was not even the algorithm that was a problem, it was just the overhead of the data structures. And even on that one, like that's about, that's almost 10 times faster because I was at a second and I'm now at 100 millisecond, uh, maybe less than 10 times, but great improvements in that one. And that's as far as it goes. And that included, did my benchmark include? Yeah, my benchmarking did not include the file part, the, 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 the file reading from disk, but that's my result for the day. We've got what we wanted here. Um, so that's it for day three. Let me see my pretty calendar. And now I have the two little stars. So see you tomorrow for what should be uh, day four. Uh, don't subscribe, don't but vote. Frankly, I'm never going to get enough subscriber to monetize any of this. So ad block all you want. I don't really care. Just make it fun for yourself. All right. Have a good day. And now it's time to go to work.